Diane's investigations and Aristotle's crossword clues had led us to the ancestral home of the 13th Baron Kite. Our next task was to penetrate the castle walls and confront the enemy within. We checked in at the neighborhood motel, covered our ears against the Highland music and collected our complimentary shortbread and dry ski slope tokens. Then I made a telephone call. Like any self-respecting private detective, I had a subterfuge, and I wasn't afraid to use it. Why are you playing with the telephone? You're supposed to be working out a way of tackling the wicked baron. You require access to the baronial mansion? Obviously. The best way to do it is via the front door by invitation. Don't tell me. You and the Baron were together at Sandhurst. Oh, good evening. Uh, may I speak to the Baron Kite, please? Uh, you, you don't know me, <coughs> and please forgive this uh, intrusion onto your personal time and space. Uh, my name is Oliver. <coughs> I'm speaking on behalf of a programme called Mastermind. I've been asked to set questions for a competitor whose chosen specialist subject is the family history of the Kite dynasty. This is a good idea. Well, he seemed very happy about it. Uh, men love to be told they're important. Coffee and biscuits were mentioned. He might be lying. Well, what's the worst thing that could happen? We could wind up face down in the loch. That's the worst thing that could happen. Death. I can live with that. Like the man said, nobody's perfect. <laughs> we have an appointment with the Baron. I am he. Charmed. I know what you're thinking. Not your regular Baron, hmm? Impossible for me to say. I rarely dally with the aristocracy. My roots are strictly proletarian. That's cool. Come into the shack. done this sort of thing before? Oh, yes. Life and work of George Farquhar. And the life and work of Lester Young. To name but two. Hey, you're a jazz freak. Oh, terminal. And I know you are. Mm. The Kirk Levin Jazz Festival, was it 1982 or 1983? 83. Only did it once. I still got the letter from my bank manager. My finest hour. My fatal overdraft. But well worth it. Eh? <laughs> I've just bought the CD. Hey. Ask me the Lester Young questions and I'll show you something as a reward. What was Lester Young's nickname? Press. Short for the president. Given to him by who? Billy Holiday. What was the name of Lester's younger brother who was also a musician? Lee Young. What instrument did he play? Drums. Baron Kite, you have scored 20 points and no passes. And here is your reward. The perennial music room. Hey, would you believe Dizzy Blue in here? What sort of music happens now? Charity gigs for good causes. We sometimes have a bit of a bash and we give parties. This is my kit. <laughs> May I ask a small favour? Sure. May I ping your middle C? <laughs> it's his homage to Beethoven. Help yourself. Thank you. 
In what way is that a homage to Beethoven? Apparently, Beethoven was a phenomenal pianist and a great improviser, but he could rarely be persuaded to play. No point in saying, give us a tune, Ludwig. <laughs> the only way was to ping a note in passing. Like that. Then say, uh, isn't this piano slightly out of tune? Then Beethoven would try it, because he had perfect pitch. <laughs> Having played one note, he couldn't stop. He would play a thousand dazzling notes. Never heard before or since. This was before he became deaf. Imagine not being able to hear this. Twelve inclusive. Oh, decent chaps, were they? The even numbers weren't bad. Two, six, and eight were pretty cool cats by the standards of the day. It's the odd numbers that tend to be the evil bastards. Aren't you number thirteen? Unlucky for some. the photocopier. I'm looking for the Baron's study. Study? Or his office, uh, whatever he calls it. He's, he's got a den. Will that do? Yeah, sounds really brilliant. It's through here. I'm not actually allowed in his den. <laughs> Forbidden fruit. My favourite. Thank you. I have to take a shower now. Sure, um, feel free. I'll get on with my tasks. Good. Family history from the Act of Union until 1982. Oh, why 1982? My father was writing it when he died in 82. I was supposed to finish it, but I got caught up in the festival. And after that, loose living, radical politics, upper class twittery, the miners' strike, ski slopes, all the usual gigs. May I borrow this? Keep it. It's all on computer. We still need to fill in the gaps from 1982 to the present. Precisely. Sure. What would you like to know? Well, I wasn't aware from reading the usual reference books that you were a socialist. Liberty, equality, fraternity. I go along with that shit. What about, if you'll forgive the impertinence, redistribution of wealth? Well, that's not down to me. No. My family's been up here for 300 years screwing the peasants into the ground. When the great day dawns and the proletariat march down the drive with the red flag and say, the game's up, 
give it all back. I'll go up with my hands up saying it's a fair cop. I'll come quietly. Lead me to Madame Guillotine. But it's down to them, comrade. Excuse me. Sure, in your own time. Next question. Well, I'm not sure how relevant is to Mastermind, but, but purely for the sake of completeness. Um, what can you tell us about the Farquhar group of companies? You're listed as some um, chairman, I believe? It's a lousy capitalist conspiracy. Every bit as corrupt and ruthless as all the others of its kind. Oh, I see. Thank you. Next question. Beethoven. Not in person, I'm afraid. Would you like to meet the piano player? Very much. I had never expected the world to make sense. But suddenly it was making so little sense. It almost made sense. Perhaps we should have our conversation in the drawing room. I once said to you, I'm sure Mr. Baxter would rather be a concert pianist than a... Than whatever he is now. Now you know my secret. That's never easy to forgive. Do you know Mr. Baxter? Doesn't everyone. Horribly sorry to interrupt, darling. But do you have a photocopier? Of course I don't. Well, there's a man here to repair the photocopier. That's him. That is he. Hi, everybody. You here to fix my photocopier? Yes, yeah, sort of. Even though I don't have one. We all make mistakes. You better come down and join us, Sonny Jim. Sonny Jim. He used to be on cornflake packets when I was little, or was it orange? Does anybody know this guy? Well, I saw him wandering about upstairs. He worked for us for a little while. He's my son, has been for years. And he's my de facto stepson. Hmm. A, a geologist of some distinction. We're very proud of him. What the hell is going on here? Oh, I think it's very simple. This is a traditional, old-fashioned um, country house mystery. <clears throat> the normal procedure is for all the suspects to, to assemble in the drawing room so that the detective can deduce uh, what is going on. I believe Mr. Baxter made that very suggestion. But who's the detective and who are the suspects? That is the first mystery. I think this is really super. Let's go into the drawing room. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in control of the situation, Mr. Baxter? More than you might suppose. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. I'm sure with a little patience and goodwill on all sides, we shall very soon get to the bottom of this matter. I see. You're a detective. 
No. Uh, no, I was a lecturer in comparative religion, but I was made redundant. He wasn't cost-effective. Tell me someone who is. Mm. But isn't that why the world is such an unhappy place? That's all we need, a stand-up philosopher. I agree the world is unhappy. I'd be fascinated to know the reason. We are none of us doing what we really want to do. You, for example, are working for Cosmos Security, PLC, when what you really want to be is a concert pianist. Michael has a degree in geology, but he was selling hot dogs in Macclesfield until he became a temporary night watchman. The Baron is an aristocrat and a landowner, yet proclaims himself a revolutionary socialist. You, a socialist? Peace and love, comrade. The Red Baron. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> what about me? Don't I get a turn at reasons to be miserable? You must forgive me. We haven't been introduced. <laughs> this is Sarah. That's Sarah without an H. I usually call her my insignificant other or my spousal monologue. But I'm his bimbo, really. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, you see. We're all confused, dislocated, rootless, alienated. We have travelled hundreds of miles, almost the length of the country, and we have met only one totally contented man. What does he do? He makes tombstones. Grandpa Delaney? The same. If the world is so unhappy, no wonder Welsh farmers end up dead, floating face downwards in rivers. What have Welsh farmers got to do with alienation and frustration? It must be a bit alienating floating face down in the river. Not to mention Adrian L. Walsh, alienated with a shotgun. My turn. Good. This should be fascinating. While you were psychoanalyzing each of us, you forgot your traveling companion. Who is Diane? What is she? The only genuine detective in the room, if I'm not mistaken. Detective? She told me she was a PA called Debbie. Debbie, my God, that's worse than Samantha. Who told you about Samantha? All manner of people tell me all manner of things, Mrs. Priest. Are you really a detective? I'm in the police force, yes. You're currently under suspension because I suggested that the superintendent might have some connection with bodies floating in rivers. <laughs> this is ever so good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. The reason we're here is that every crime we've investigated is linked to a variety of dubious companies with interests in property, finance and security, and all of them part of the Farquhar group. Your group, Baron. You seem to have been keeping bad companies. And you'd like to know whether I murdered the people you mentioned? I'd expect you to deny it. He does. <laughs> you guys don't know much about capitalism, do you? <laughs> I think that's because we've never been overburdened with capital. <laughs> <laughs> the Farquhar group of companies doesn't belong to me. It was taken over years ago. Your name's on the letterhead. A touch of the old aristocracy gives credibility. Can't imagine why, but it does. So who owns your baby? A conglomerate. They don't have names. Americans, Japanese, Germans, Italians. Oh, and there's some funny money from Eastern Europe. But I told you, I don't dig that crap. I started going broke when I organized that festival, and I've been going further down the tubes ever since. What is the opposite of Chinese boxes? I know Chinese boxes. You open a box, and inside there's a smaller box, and then you open that box, and inside there's a smaller box, and then you open that box, and inside there's Yes, a I think box. we're all familiar with Chinese boxes. This is the opposite. The opposite. We started with a little box in the middle, a dead farmer called Griffiths. And he's in a box called 19th Hole Developments, PLC, and they're in a box called Cosmos Security, and they're in a box called the Farquhar Group. And that box belongs to you. And you tell us that you're in another box called the box with no name. And you would be well advised to keep clear of the box with no name. Tell them the story you told me about you and your father. This is a joke. 
<laughs> I collect jokes. My father was an old-fashioned Tory. I'm a revolutionary socialist. He said to me one day, what will happen when the revolution comes and we confront each other across the barricades? Will you shoot me? And I said, I will aim to miss, but I cannot speak for my friends. It's not really a joke. Yes, I can see that it isn't really a joke. You can feel just as alienated floating face down in a Scottish loch as you can in a Welsh river. Perhaps a little more chilly, being further north. Undoubtedly. Sarah, would you mind? Hi. Yes? Just a minute. Is your name Diane Priest? Yes. It's your father. Ah. Oh. He rings me every day. Always knows where I am. He sounds really sweet. He's the one who makes the tombstones. Dad? Yeah. We're fine. We're having a lovely time. We're just leaving. That went well, didn't it? Just keep walking. Never met a baron before. He's a cool dude, isn't he? He can't speak for his friends. He's very good on Lester Young. You heard what they said about floating face downward. The man has his own loch right there. There's Cosmos security on our letterhead. Cosmos? Look at that. We can't even keep an eye on my own backyard. Private security, fastest growth rate of any activity of the decade, along with bankruptcy, repossession, and suicide. Conclusion? Tell me. Most of it is run by idiots, dropouts, and psychopaths. That's why we prefer to rely on cameras. However, <laughs> your head gamekeeper tells me that the wild animals chew through the cables. He could be lying. Ah, I forgot about lying. That's the fastest growth rate of all. Conclusion? If I tell you, you won't believe me. Nice people. Michael's a sweetie. The boy. The one who came to fix the photocopier. It's natural to like people of your own age. Yes, they all three have a deceptive quality of innocence. Yes, that's it. Innocence. But innocence, whatever the preachers say, is no protection. If I eat all my salmon and leave a clean plate, may we go to the Orkneys tomorrow? Of course. Why not? The Orkneys? Can you drop me in Aberdeen? Why do you want to go to Aberdeen anyway? See George Burns. Thought he was in prison. He'd be out by now. And I told you, I found this really amazing stuff upstairs at Baron's Castle. I'm not an expert, but I think this is all their computer codes. You stole this? Well, how else would I get it? Michael, these people are heavy-duty villains. Give George 20 minutes hacking time and he'll get it sorted. Besides, you want to get rid of me, don't you? No. Well, yes. Possibly. He did place it on record, but he considers me a bit naff. But I was wrong about that. You're not. But Mum's turned a bit naff. Me naff? You're also a bit noisy at night. That settles it. First thing tomorrow, I'm ready. See you guys. Well, there you go. Be careful out there. Stay cool.
What game are we playing? Famous Orkney persons. Orcadians. No, I, I, I thought uh, since we're alone at last, we uh, might play alone at last. Do we have room? It's a talking game. You have to talk as if you're in a soap opera. What's the point of the game? It's a soap opera. It doesn't have one. Oh, like a record. If you can't think of anything to say, you say, uh, what is that supposed to mean? Well, let's try it. All right, I'll start. Alone at last. Darling, we have to talk. What's that supposed to mean? You know what it means. From the moment I saw you, I knew. When I walked into the room? I saw you and I saw myself. Oh, oh clearly for the first time. And I saw what I'd become of a man running away. I sometimes think we're all running away in this godforsaken world. And I guess we've been running away from ourselves. I guess so. And I guess this is when the running has to stop. What's that supposed to mean? You know what it means. Neighbors. Everybody needs good neighbors. We're being followed. to the oil rigs. We're not an oil rig. We do not need supplies. He's not bringing supplies. It was an aeroplane in North by Northwest. In 1959, helicopter technology was still in its infancy. Don't go out there. No, I think they've gone away. Right. What are you doing? Going to check the car. What's there to check? Look at it. It's shot at. As it were. I need my newspaper. I haven't even started the crossword. And the luggage. No claims, no one. You need his registration number and the name of his insurance company. <sighs> Sorry. I may be a law enforcement officer, but I'm... It's good. Yeah. Me too. I only joke when I'm frightened. As you must have noticed, I joke almost all the time. I've noticed. On the other hand, had I been destined to die this afternoon, it would have been 
a very good time for me to go. What's that supposed to mean? I'm very happy being with you. That's what that's supposed to mean. It could well be what that means, if you see what I mean. I see what that's supposed to mean. Thank you. for George Burns. Who are you from? I'm not from anybody. My name's Michael. I was at university with him. You're Michael? Yeah. Oh, great. He talked a lot about you. Is he around? Oh, no, he's inside. Can I come in? No, not inside. Inside. I thought he'd be out by now. He was, but he's back in again. Uh, that's tough. You better come in. Thanks. What's he gone down for this time? Income tax rebates. Income tax rebates. He had a word with the Inam Avenue computer, organised one or two small payments into his account. Never paid tax in his life. That was the prosecution case. He got six months. Pity. I had a job for him. What, hacking? Yeah. Who are you trying to stitch up? It's sort of a multinational business conglomerate. I've got the code book. Piece of piss. What are you doing? Breaking and entering without getting wet. Is it legal? Not really. I spy with my little eye something beginning with S.A. Scottish ambience. Sod all. And I still expect that thing to come back any minute. When you feel you're in danger, do you know the safest place to be? Tell me. In a crowd. A crowd? We're more likely to meet King Lear. Don't despair. That is the real enemy. Despair. Is this a new game? The wit and wisdom of Christmas crackers? Oh, ye of little faith. You're doing it again. Look. Terrific. Where's the bus stop? This isn't a regular service bus, I'm afraid. What time is the next service bus? Thursday, I believe. Could you possibly give us a lift? We seem to have fallen by the wayside on stony ground. We're only going as far as the kirk. And that's the church. I know what a kirk is. And it's standing room only. My word, your bus runneth over. Quite so. A crowd. <clears throat> we would love to come to your kirk. We've travelled many miles for that very purpose. Would you be our visiting preacher by any chance? 
if necessary. God bless you, my son. What a friend we have in Jesus. Serious about preaching a sermon? Well, clearly they expected a visiting preacher. And there's safety in a crowd. Remember Joseph Cotton, then the third man. I'm not going down any sewers. I've preached comparative religion for several hundred years. Preacher, I'm due to deliver a sermon in five minutes' time. Oh, sir, I'm very sorry. But... God is a person of infinite wisdom and patience. Anybody hurt? Apparently not. No sign of anyone. Yeah, you see, nobody was hurt. You may add infinite mercy to God's qualities. But I shouldn't be here. If we're ordained to be here, that must be part of his purpose. These are seriously weird people. I know. I keep getting the word priest. Priest? Priest S and D. That's my mum's name, priest. Mine too, I suppose. Do you know where she is? Somewhere between here and the Orkneys. Can you get in touch with her? Is there a problem? S and D. These people generally use it as computer shorthand for search and destroy. They can't search and destroy my mum, can they? Well, they probably can, but we might just be able to kick them in the ghoulies. I would like to take as my theme two well-known texts. The first is, Thou shalt not kill. And the second is, What's that supposed to mean? Thou shalt not kill is, of course, the popular variation of the Sixth Commandment, which actually says, according to the Book of Common Prayer, Thou shalt do no murder. But thou shalt not kill is good enough for me. What's that supposed to mean is a text from a television soap opera. Any old television soap opera. But it is a good question. Put our two texts together, and what do we have? Thou shalt not kill, what's that supposed to mean? I've been thinking about it a great deal in the last couple of hours, because a couple of hours ago, somebody tried to kill us. They failed, as you can see. Who are these people? Answer? No idea. Never met them in my life. Why are they trying to kill us? Answer. Oh, they're just carrying out orders. Isn't that a good enough reason? Answer. No. It's the oldest excuse in the history of mass murder. 
who is responsible and who should bear the guilt. Well, as an even wiser man once pointed out, that is the question. I have never expected the world to make sense. I suppose that's why we have religions, and I certainly wish you comfort and joy of yours. For my own part, I find most comfort in old jokes. My favourite joke is about frogs, my second favourite is about a horse, and my third favourite is about religious faith and a man in a bowler hat. May I tell it? A man was walking through a forest one day when in a clearing he met another man. The second man was stark naked except for a bowler hat. Excuse me, said the first man. But you're not wearing any clothes. I know, said the second man. Nobody walks in this part of the forest. So why are you wearing a bowler hat if nobody walks in this part of the forest? Well, said the second man, you never know. Somebody might. Religion is, I suggest, a bowler hat. Which we choose to wear or not, as the case may be, in case it turns out there's somebody in the depths of the forest. I also think, thou shalt not kill is a very good commandment. But I speak out of prejudice. Thank you for your charity. We'll now sing He's Got the Whole World in His Hand. Yourself. For what? Thunderbolts, locusts, frogs. That's it. The whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got the whole world. Yes, please, we'd like that very much. God bless you both. You know each other. Mr. Baxter follows us everywhere. And he has been known to consort with men of violence. Yeah, at arm's length. What is the position of your sect on men of violence, Mrs. It's McCall? Undecided. I believe in turning the other cheek. But some of the men in our flock, shepherds, crofters, hill farmers, believe they should be beaten into plowshares. Madam, my policy is to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We cannot allow you to be murdered in our parish. What are you planning to do tomorrow? We were hoping to go to the Orkneys. On the ferry? Yes. I will take you to the ferry. Do you have transport? I have access to transport. And I also have two spare rooms at my host's. Or will one be sufficient? Thank you. One will be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Bingo! Their whole empire is now buried under deep and noxious substances. They'll need a bucket excavator to dig themselves out. You're brilliant. Yes, when well, I didn't get my PhD for being a stand-up comedian. You've got a PhD? Sure. Doesn't everybody?
can't access the files. All that comes up is bollocks. I am not your computer helpline. I am your chief security advisor, and in that capacity, here is an order. No more cowboys in helicopters, no more cowboys with shotguns, no more cowboys with blunt instruments. It's what the psychologists call attention-seeking behavior. And attention is the last thing you require at this moment in your fortune. Please give that message to your leaders. I can really finger these bastards. Good night, suckers. Thank you for looking after us. And thank you for the book. You cannot possibly travel to Orkney without reading George Mackay Brown. You allowed to give away library books? Wear and tear. It'll be replaced. And you keep your promise. I promise to stay out of trouble and stop worrying my son. I must go. Officially, I'm out of my area. The chief librarian might ask awkward questions. God bless you both. Bye. Our bonny boat sped like a bird on the wing over the sea to the port of Stromness and the mainland of Orkney. A wise man once said, it is better to travel hopefully than to arrive. We were about to arrive. We would find out.